Hello once again. I've got a neat piece of vintage video equipment to show you guys today. This is a Sony Trinitron model CVM1271 video monitor and it was made in 1989. The CVM series of Sony monitors were kind of oddball. It's not a television set, although it can function as one, and it's not a PVM. The CVMs were sort of in the middle. CVM stands for Composite Video Monitor. This is, put simplest, a commercial grade television set that also has a composite video input. I got this from the TV station. Uh, I've had this in my possession for like a year and a half. This was the TV station's old broadcast monitor. This was connected to the output of our transmitter and tuned to channel 26 and we used it to monitor our broadcasts until we win HD in January of 2021. And then she was retired and now there's a modern HD LCD monitor in its place. Uh, we also tuned it to channel 3 if we wanted to monitor our broadcasts on Bell TV. Uh, channel 3 just came from the RF output of a Bell satellite receiver. Regardless of if you use this thing as a television set or a video monitor, uh, it's, it's, it does a beautiful job of both. It's got a really stellar picture on it. And uh, it's got a, quite a decent uh, speaker on it too. Certainly better speaker than a PVM, like my, my 8 inch PVMs. It's kind of funny, when I first acquired this thing, and actually before I acquired it, I thought, this, I thought the tube in this thing was worn the hell out, and you would actually kind of expect a tube in something like this to be worn the hell out, because this thing ran several hours a day for years. I don't know how long we had it. Um, we had it for at least 10 or 15 years. Th this is XCBC. The CBC originally owned this, and presumably when they win HD... They gave it to us. Um, so we had this for at least a decade. Um, but either way, I can only imagine this thing ran hours a day, every day, for years. And so I actually thought the tube was quite worn out because the picture was quite dim. However, when I first got this thing and took it home, I took this front glass off. And it turned out that the inside of the glass, the outside of the glass, and the face of the tube itself were all covered in dust. And after I cleaned everything, this thing actually has a fine picture on it. It doesn't look worn out at all. This, this thing is a beautiful picture. So let's take a look at what we got here. Got our power switch, channel up and down. This also has channel memory, so you can program what channels you want. And then pressing channel up and down just goes between those memories. Your channel indication is an LED display right here. You've got LED indicators for which input you're using, the TV tuner. The VTR input, which we'll see what that means on the back, or the line input, that's the composite input. Your volume control. She's super fine pitch, so I guess it's a slightly higher grade 12 inch Trinitron tube than what you'd get in a normal Trinitron television set of the same size. If we open this up, there's your direct program for the channel and uh, clear, erase, and add for programming the channel memories. You got your V-hold. Sub-volume is basically a separate volume control. I guess basically you sort of set the range or perhaps the maximum volume that you'd ever want to use. Um, and then your main volume control just controls the volume within that range. You got a brightness control, choose your input, these are mechanical switches, and you've got your hue, color saturation, and your picture control, which I suppose is kind of like uh, contrast, and you've got automatic frequency control, slow or fast. Oh, we've got some instructions right there. And flip this thing around. As you can see, this is definitely a commercial grade unit because we've got BNCs on here. We've got T 
TV out, so that's actually a video output of the TV tuner. So if you had a VTR, like this one, that doesn't have its own television tuner, but you wanted to record off of a television broadcast, you could use the TV out and connect it to the video input of the VTR. I'm not sure what monitor out is, I'm guessing... Well, I'm not sure, because in addition to the TV out, there's also a line out, in addition to a line in, of course. So, I wonder if monitor out is, like, switchable, like it goes between the TV out or the line out, depending on what input you have set to. Perhaps we'll test that. And then we've got the audio side here. Monitor out, TV out, line in, line out. And then here's our VTR input, and a lot of you have probably never seen this before. I've never dealt with this before. I had to look it up and see what it was, but um, this is generally referred to as an EIAJ-8 uh, VTR connector. It is a way of connecting a VTR to a monitor, and it goes back to the 1960s, the days of half-inch black-and-white reel-to-reel videotape recorders. And basically what this connector provides is it provides... AV in, composite in, and an audio in, but it also provides AV out. So this serves the same purpose as our output connectors on here, where if you had an old VTR that doesn't have its own television tuner and you wanted to record off of television, this connector provides a way to use just one cable, not only to connect the VTR to the monitor, but also to connect the monitor to the VTR for recording off of television or off of a line input that might be connected up here. A one-wire solution, so you're not running four separate wires. Very nice. And here's our TV antenna inputs, our VHF and UHF. Got some tabs to wrap the cord around, very nice. Uh, a rabbit ear holder used to live here. Over here we have six potentiometers. They're in sets of three. They are the red, green, and blue gun uh, intensity adjustments. And the reason there's two sets of them, red, green, blue, red, green, blue, is the top three here are for if you're set to a 9300 Kelvin color temperature. The bottom three are for if you're set to a 6500 Kelvin color temperature. And you can indeed adjust the color temperature. That switch is right here. 9300 or 6500 Kelvin. So a useful, useful uh, feature. Got a focus control, screen control. So uh, quite the ability to tune the tube in this thing without having to open it up for commercial use only. And there it is, model CVM1271 Trinitron color receiver slash monitor. 90 watts, made in Japan. There's the uh, CBC sticker on it. Manufacture date, September 1989. It's worth noting that Sony did make a PVM version of this. It was called the PVM1271Q and instead of a TV tuner it had the line input but it also had a component input. So assuming they use the same tube this is very much all the quality of a PVM it just doesn't have the component input you just have the composite input and a television tuner which is kind of useless in this day and age but yeah a very nice set so let me plug it in we will wire video output to my Betacam SX VCR here and we'll take a look and see how it looks all right well plugged in I'll actually set it to the uh, TV tuner first turn it on <laughs> it's uh Still tuned to channel 26. I've never changed it. Oh. Hopefully our, our tube's starting to warm up. She's pretty darn dark, so maybe this tube is kind of tired. But, uh, let me turn this guy on. 
and we will set this to line got some color bars up and uh, yeah thing makes a beautiful picture plenty bright great colors but you know what I'm noticing for the first time we do have a bit of a pin cushion going on and actually I saw a picture of one of these that's for sale on eBay and it has severe pin cushion going on actually it uh, the uh, picture wouldn't even fill horizontally like very severe pin cushion so hmm I wonder if that's something I can fix I wouldn't be surprised if it's bad capacitors this thing was made in 1989 pretty much all Sony equipment from the late 80s early 90s suffered from bad capacitors so I wouldn't be surprised if that's the case or maybe it's something that I can tweak with a potentiometer inside I don't know I'll have to Google that, see if anybody else has ever done that. But on the whole, I mean, unless you're looking at color bars, I don't think you would even notice. It's very slight pincushion, and certainly we never noticed it at the station. It was a non-issue. But there you go. Other than that, really beautiful uh, picture on this. Um, I don't have a way to connect sound from this into this. Um, so we won't be able to demo the sound, but it works. It's fine. You know, you'd be hearing it through a camcorder anyway. But let me put a tape in. I don't know if this has a SP recording on it or if I recorded a SX recording on it. We'll find out. Oh, yes, this was a test recording of my... Uh, of a camcorder. Oh, no, this is when I was uh, playing with, uh, I have one of those old uh, Panasonic convertible cameras, those three CCD cameras. Right. I was recording to this thing while I was playing with it. But, I mean, easy to see, very sharp picture. Sharp picture out of that camcorder, um, or that camera, rather. Uh, but this tube really replicates that sharpness very, very well, even over a crappy composite signal. Here's another Betacam SP tape. See what this looks like. Life in HGTV. Okay. Oh, cool. Well, that looks nice. Like I said, you can't really notice the pin cushion at all, so maybe I just shouldn't worry about it. Let's see if I can turn off the overhead light here. Yeah, there you go. I now have a VCR uh, hooked up to the RF input, tuned into channel 3, and uh, I connected the TV out jack into the video input of this VCR, and sure enough, that's what it's for. This VCR is now watching the TV's TV tuner, and if I switch the uh, CVM's input to line, so now we're watching the line input, this is still seeing the RF output, or the or what's what's going into the RF input of this set, the the VCR. So that's very cool. I now have the so-called monitor output of the set going into my VCR, and sure enough, the VCR is now able to see whatever the monitor sees. So I'm connected, so I'm tuned into the TV tuner, and if I hit the line button, oops. You can see they both go blank because there's nothing on the line input. So very neat, very neat little uh, function there. Well guys, that's about all there is to show of the Sony Trinitron model CVM-1271 video monitor from 1989. 
I think this is a very nice unit. It's got a good picture. It's got fine sound for a 12 inch TV. And uh, yeah, it's super useful. I actually kind of wish I could put this to use uh, rather than my 8 inch PVM. Uh, the reason I always stick with the 8 inch PVM is because it's smaller. Because uh, obviously space is at a very strong premium over there. Um, but I'll try and use this thing where I can. Um, of course, my the new case for my computer is going to come in soon, so there's going to be a big rearrangement of the desk. Um, I, and so maybe then I will be able to incorporate this thing into my videotape digitization setup. But this is not going to be the last you see of this thing. In fact, if I stick to my plan, you will see this again in my very next video where it will help me demonstrate a very vintage VCR. And I'm very excited for that and I hope you are too. But yeah, it's a nice monitor. I'm not going to worry about uh, the little pin cushion going on. It's so minor that the only time you notice it is when you're looking at color bars. So yeah, really, really fine monitor. Uh, did years and years of really important duty and uh, now it's living out retirement with me. So there you go. Thank you very much for watching. I do hope you enjoyed. A big thanks to my Patreon supporters and everyone else who watches, as always. And I will see you in the next video.